This is my current router fence, and as you can see, it's a little beat up, and it was made pre-YouTube, so I don't have a build video to reference to. So today, we're gonna replace it with this router fence. I made this one with better plywood, and we're gonna add some accessories to it. So stick around for the build. So haven't already made the router fence uh, one time before, and like I said, it was pre-YouTube. I knew what I wanted, and I had already made a plan for it. And so I've got it pulled up in the shop and I reference that plan uh, as I'm going along with the build. So I'll reference the plan, I'll go make a cut and go back ref reference the plan again. And that's typically how I like to work. Uh, this, just so I can make sure I'm making the right cuts and I don't mess up. And I like to use all of the plywood. So here I've got some smaller pieces that I'm trying to get the most out of. And so they're different widths and different lengths. So I'll rip a piece and then go over to the bandsaw, cut it to length, and I'll go back to the table saw and rip it again. And then I'll go back to the bandsaw and cut that length. And so I, I do this a few times and, and all I'm trying to do is just get the most out of the plywood that I already have in the shop. And so you can see those little pieces stacked up on the table. And those are the pieces that I'm cutting here and so I'm getting ready or getting close uh, to be able, being able to assemble this thing. But I've got a couple more cuts to make. Um, this piece that I'm marking out here is the adjustable front fence that is on the lower portion of the front of the fence. And so what I'll do is I'll cut that over at the bandsaw. And these are two identical pieces, uh, the same measurement. And then what I'll do next is I'll cut a 45 on the end of each piece and what this does is when they're on the front of the fence you can adjust them in a way to where uh, different size router bits are just perfect in between these two pieces and the 45s that I'm cutting allows for the dust to be able to exit uh, a little better uh, so if these were flat on the ends um, you wouldn't necessarily get clogged uh, clog up or anything like that but just the 45 makes it easier. And so um, I'm referencing the plan again. And uh, these two pieces that I cut next are for the dust collection. So this piece is the bottom of the router fence. Uh, and this is what rides on the table or is secured to the tabletop. So the big portion there that I'm cutting out is what's over the dust port for the router. And so that gives a, a large opening for the dust to go past the router bit through the front of the fence and into this little cavity that I'm making and down into the dust port. Now this piece here is the front of the fence. Uh, and this, the small cutout that I'm making is uh, uh, accepts the height of the router bit. And so uh, you wouldn't have any more than this because if you raise it up too high above the table uh, within well your your blade would be above the table. So next I'm going to cut a, a few uh, triangle supports for the back of the fence and that's just to kind of tie everything together. And so since I'm needing to add in a T-track to the front of this fence, I'm using, I'm going to use the dado stack on my table saw. I could very easily just use the router setup that I've got, but if you're building a router fence, uh, I'm assuming that you don't since you're wanting to build a router fence. So that's why I'm using the table saw. I'm using the table saw, I'm trying to get the measurement that I need. Uh, it's a three quarter inch wide for the T-track and three eighths of an inch deep. And so that's what I'm doing here. That's the depth that I'm measuring. And I just want that to kiss the blade. And now I've got a sacrificial piece of wood here for a fence and I can get exactly three quarters of an inch. And that way I can cut into the wood a little bit if I need to, to get that right measurement. And so there you can see that the T-Track fits nicely into that little rabbit. Um, and so you could, like I said, you could have done this on the router uh, just as well. But, so here, this particular T-Track did not come pre-drilled. So I'm pre-drilling some holes um, just to be able to secure this to the front of the fence. And then once I get done with this, I don't show it, but I go back and uh, countersink so the screw heads are not protruding out into the T-track. 
And so this uh, piece here is the adjustable fence on the uh, front of the router. And so I'll take a, a drill bit and just drill all the way through. That would allow uh, my T-bolt to go through the piece uh, from the front. And then what I'm doing here is taking a forstner bit and drilling down just a little bit to have the uh, head of the T-bolt recessed into that piece of wood. And so it's not in the way on the front of the one of the router fence. It all makes sense uh, here shortly when you see the completed piece. And so the front of the router fence to be able to adjust those, uh, that, uh, to be able to adjust that front fence, I need a couple of slots there on the front of that fence. And that's what I was cutting in there with the jigsaw. And so now I'm just um, so, uh, securing the supports on the back and kind of made a little bit of a mistake here, but I'll cover that in just a second. So I've got everything um, assembled as far as the foundation of the router fence. And now I'm just checking for squareness and it looks pretty good. Uh, I can, and well as square as this uh, speed square is. And so there's no daylight shining through uh, between the square, speed square and the front of the router fence. So I'm happy with that. So we'll go with it. Now I'm going to uh, attach the front adjustable fence through that slot that I cut with a jigsaw and that will allow for different size router bits. Okay, so let me stop just for a second and explain what's going on here. So in the video, you noticed that I had uh, four of these, one and two here, and then I also had uh, two here, and then I moved them out to the edges because of this slot right here for the front fence. And that didn't work, so I had to move them out to here to allow for this to slide back and forth. And then once I moved them here, I didn't have room for this knob to have a hole, or actually to have the, the, the T-bolt come up through the bottom that is in this T-track in the table. So with the support here, I didn't have room for this. And with the support here, I didn't have room to slide this piece back and forth. So I'm, I've modified the plans and I just have two supports and there are a couple of screws on the front through the front through this piece into this piece and it's the screws are hidden by this front adjustable fence piece so just want to clarify what was going on on the back side here and that's why I only have two supports now whereas the previous scene that you saw had four okay so now I can go ahead and finish assembling the fence and so what I've got here I've got the piece that I cut the rabbit in along with the T-track and I just need to secure that to the main part of the fence with a screw and so I'm just screwing straight through the T-track through the rabbit that I made and into that uh, back piece on the front of the router fence. So once I get all of those screws um, installed I can move on to the next step but you want to make sure that you have all of the screw heads completely buried into the um, uh, T-track. So if you have a T-track that does not come with pre-drilled holes, countersink those holes so the head of the screw can be seated properly. Okay, so now this is the dust collection. And what I'm screwing into, that's the bottom of the router fence. And I'm just attaching the side walls to the dust port. And this is a box that covers that dust port. And it's really, really effective. Okay, so now I need to drill the holes that the T-bolts T can uh, fit into once they're in the T-track on the assembly table. And so that's what I'm doing here. I drill about halfway through, flip it over, and then drill uh, the rest of the way through, just to try to prevent any blowout or tear out or anything. So once I get this uh, installed on the table, I can secure it with a couple of star knobs, and I'll include the link down in the description for a kit that includes all of the T-bolts and star knobs and all of that stuff. Uh, it's a really, really a cool kit. So that'll be linked down in the description for you. So this is the accessory kit that I'm adding. That is the bit guard and two feather boards. Uh, so that's really handy. They just slide right in to the T-track and then you tighten it down. This is adjustable. And so you can uh, lower it and raise it however high or low you need it. And also with the, uh, router bit guard. You can raise and lower that as well if you, if 
you have a larger bit or a small bit. So it's pretty, uh, pretty universal there. And so this tightens down with those knobs and you would be, you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some test cuts so you can see just how well this works and um, kind of give you an idea of the dust collection, how well it works. And so I'll show you uh, a dust collection demonstration after I make a couple of passes here. And so here I'm just, I just got a random bit and it's actually a dovetail bit, but I'm just cutting the edge of this wood just to kind of give you an idea how well the dust collection does work. Um, and so I've got the feather boards lowered to where they make just a slight contact with the wood. Uh, and so here is the dust collection uh, demonstration and it works very, very well. Uh, and this whole router lift and dust collection design is Jay Bates design. Um, he and I partnered together with the assembly table and the router lift and so we have a plan for that that's bundled over on the website so you can check that out. And if you buy that, then you also get this router fence included for free. Uh, but if you're interested in just the router fence, I also have a plan for that on my website that you can check out as a standalone purchase. And so um, that's, that's the build. I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And check out the website at stoneandsons.net and sign up for the newsletter while you're there. Again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.